This is a video on mostly setting up and in, in getting a good way to do powder coating. I did a lot of experiments when I first got my powder coating uh, system here. It was a, uh, a, a cheaper system. It comes from Eastwood and I was very happy with it. Uh, I mounted the unit solid on here so I don't have to move fool with it. The, uh, the wire that feeds it is all put together so it's easy to handle and you need a big place to put this because it won't stand up very well it'll fall down if you put it put it on its thing it won't stay there another thing I did is I mounted its own uh, air regulator down underneath here and everything is all plugged in so I just have one plug to stick in the wall the storage is down here all the, all the stuff that I use is in these three drawers powders are in the bottom and the other thing about the, uh, the system is it comes with another wire with a switch on it so you hold it in this hand and you push the button and so both hands are tied up and you have nothing to do any turn anything with so what I did is I put a foot pedal down here that actually pushes the button so it gives me one free hand That's about it for the setup, except for one more thing. Let me show you the, the fan in the back. I went through uh, about four of these boxes. The first ones I made out of cardboard and duct tape and experimented with them, put fans in them and put filters in them. And I learned a couple of things. One, you want to make it so a standard filter fits it. And this filter is just put in with little magnetic slats that hold it in place. So I can just pull it right out of there. And I also started out with a window fan which is way, way too big. And, and this is actually the third fan I've gone to. It is, it's a little muffin fan, and I've actually had to leave a little space here so it leaks a little bit. And the reason for that is, is you don't want a lot of air moving by your part. If you get too much air moving by your part, it will, it will pull all the dust right past it. What you want to do is create a cloud around it, and it gets a chance to attract it into it. And you'll notice if you get it just right that even when you turn it around, it'll be all around on the backside already. So that, but just remember, you want just enough air so the dust isn't coming out. You, you don't want any more movement than that. And because it's dust and not paint, I have the lights inside there. And let me show you that. You can see. And it's just a, a little strip of LED lights all the way around here so I get light from all directions and it really works out good. And then there's a switch here for the fan. I guess you can hear it running. And another thing, I, you probably already know this, but the part has to be grounded. So I've run a ground wire up here and a little brush so this hook up here is, is grounded or, or neutral or whatever you call it. And if I have a part that's down below, I just clip this clip lead on here and clip that to the part when it's on the lower turntable. And I think that just about covers it. This is just a standard uh, toaster oven is what I'm using. It's really too small, but uh, that's what I'm using for now. I've, so when you spray the powder in, just watch the face here and just get enough air movement so that it's not coming out. Now, if it, obviously, if you're facing the gun in, it tends to stay in there. But if you've got more air pressure coming out of here than is going back, then it's going to come out to the front. The second thing that you have to take into consideration is after you do a part, you have to get it into the oven without touching it. Because if you touch it anywhere, you're going to get a spot that will show up. So you want to not touch the thing anywhere. So it's, it's pretty easy with a part that's hung on a hook, which I do most of my parts with just a little piece of copper wire like this. I hang it on there and hang it from the hook. Now, like I mentioned before, the hook is neutral or grounded, whichever you want to call it. And it's controlled by the foot pedal down here to turn the machine on and I can turn this and turn the part 
and there's a little wiper up here that's that's grounded and if I have a bigger part I also have a turntable for that this is just nothing but a little bearing and a piece of plywood and I can put my part on there and spin it around now of course that has to be grounded so what I do is put a bolt in here and I take this part off with the special tape put a bolt in there and then I collect, connect it to the ground wire up here with a clip lead. And that works out pretty well. Now, on a part like this, you have to do a practice run on getting it in the oven. Because, first place, the oven's at 400 degrees and you can easily burn yourself. Now, it has to sit on this little block. So if I tried to do that with my hands, as you can see, I could easily touch something and burn myself. So what I made is just a simple little piece like this that I can reach in there and pick it up, place it in the oven without putting my hands in there, and I haven't touched it. And that would be it. Now this part is already powder coated. As you can see, the finish is absolutely beautiful on these. And it's very hard. It won't scratch easy or anything. And this is on aluminum, which to me was a real problem at first because I couldn't get a good primer and, and you could scratch it off no matter what you painted it with. Now I'll give you a short demonstration of how easy it is to set this up and actually do a part. And, and then I'll clean it up and show you how easy it is to clean up. First off, I need the powder. Down here I have the stored powder and this, these containers are only partly full and that's what you use about a third full is what you want for your gun and the rest is storage so screw this on here I need air I've already plugged the the main plug-in, so that's all set to go. And put the fan on, put the light on. And what I'm gonna do is just a simple sample here, a little piece of uh, aluminum. And that's hung on this, uh, this grounded hook up here, or, or I guess it's neutral or something. So all I do is push the pedal. You notice that the powder is floating around in there, but none of it's coming out. Now, if you look real close, you'll see a little white area around the hook. That's called the Faraday effect, and I'm not sure what causes it, but you have to be aware of that. It's always good to uh, have your connection somewhere where it doesn't matter, because sometimes you get that. You can cover it, and you see how much that wrapped around than did the back side. So I just have to do a little bit here. And that's it. That part is ready to bake. Take it. Hang it in the oven very carefully without getting burned. And that's going to bake. Uh, after it flows out, it has to bake for 20 minutes. So. It's set at 400 degrees right now, and I can turn it down to 350 and bake it for 20 minutes afterwards. So we'll do that and then come back to the video. Okay. Due to the magic of cinematography, uh, the 20 minutes has gone by and I can now take this out of the oven and it's fully baked. Turn that off and take the part out. And as you can see, that's a very, very nice finish and it won't scratch off. It's, it's cured completely. And that's about it. I will show you uh, one more thing that I did. It's, it's so simple to set this up that I've actually gone ahead and done some bolt heads. Because if you do a bolt head, you know, with paint and you put a wrench to it, it'll chip right off. Well, this powder coating will not chip off. It will, it will paint the bolt and it'll be beautiful. And all I do is take a small piece of aluminum and tap some holes in it and screw the bolts in there and put the backside through here. 
And then I would just tape the back with a special tape, take this clip lead and use that for my ground. And I hang it from the inside here. Whoop. And I would powder coat it and then hang it in the oven. Now, as you can see, those bolt heads are fully covered. And if I bake that out, that finish won't come off of there very easy. You can put a wrench to it or whatever. But I'm not gonna bake this because uh, I don't happen to need any red bolts right at the time. But I'll show you how easy it is to clean it off when it's a powder. So you make a mistake and you wanna correct it, what you do is blow the powder off. I just take it in here and And there they are. So now I'll show you how easy it is to clean up when I'm finished. Uh, the air gun is, uh, of course, quite necessary for this. I can just blow the side a little bit and pull them all into the filter. I can't put a big blast in there because it'll come out. Just have to do it very lightly and you can do it with a vacuum they say not to use a vacuum but i have used a vacuum i've seen a lot of other people use a vacuum and, and it hasn't blown up yet so i'm not saying it's safe but i've done it now the gun itself has to be cleaned take the bottle off A rag, wipe most of the powder off of it, and then take the air gun, hold it inside your booth, That's all there is to it. That's all set to go. I could vacuum out that or wipe that out inside, but uh, that's about all the cleanup you have to do. Put everything away. Make sure your powder coats aren't left open. They, they might get moisture in them. I haven't had any trouble with uh, moisture yet, but they, they say to keep them capped. So. The reason I went to all the trouble of building this unit is because I have a small shop. And in here I do metalwork and woodworking. And I can't have all the tools out, there just isn't enough room. So everything that is in here that I can put on casters is on casters and I can roll it around. This I actually store in the other end of the shop when I'm not using it. So I have to be able to put the thing away. So all I have to do is unhook hook the air, unplug the one plug, and this is all on casters. Everything is there. All the storage is there, and I just roll it to the other end of the shop, and that's it.